This news alert brought to you by Casarina All Sports Club. All your entertainment under one roof. Good evening. The CLP has released its gas policy, promising to grow an onshore gas industry if elected. It comes as a new report claims the NT's economy will weather the COVID storm better than other jurisdictions. It's an issue that's divided Territorians like no other, but that hasn't deterred the CLP. This is an emerging industry that plays to our natural strengths. The party's gas for jobs policy maps out how it would use gas to develop a manufacturing industry. Gas is a foundational opportunity for us to set a pathway to manufacturing, a pathway to a cleaner energy future and a pathway to producing products here locally in the Territory. But a new report released by left wing think tank the Australia Institute claims onshore gas won't develop manufacturing because it will be too expensive. Ms Finocchiaro disagrees. Markets will ultimately determine how investment flows. The industry is economically viable. The policy comes as Deloitte Access Economics suggested the NT will weather the COVID storm better than other jurisdictions. The Treasurer wasn't available for an interview but in a statement attributed the positive forecast to the Territory's early lockdown and reopening. But the CLP insists it's because the economy was already at the bottom. We're starting from a low base and the important um, announcement like we've just made today is is what the future is going to look like for us. And Tracy Hayes won't get the chance to push that message head to head with the Chief Minister at Thursday's Rotary Meet the Candidates event, with Michael Gunner confirming he won't be there. I am disappointed. At the end of the day, the Chief Minister is the member for Fanny Bay, so he should be there. The Chief's office says he'll be in a remote community and can't accept every invitation because he wouldn't have time to deal with the coronavirus or run the government. The owner of a popular Darwin cafe is calling for more to be done to tackle crime after his business was again targeted by vandals. The moment the front door of Salvatore's cafe was smashed, caught on CCTV. A shocking act of vandalism caught on camera. A group walks towards Salvatore's cafe in the early hours of Saturday morning where an altercation ensues before one of the group's members loses her temper and kicks in the cafe's front door. We came to work on Saturday morning just before 6.30 a.m. and we noticed that our front door window had been kicked in. This was someone deciding they were just going to kick our window because it was there. The owner telling Nine News antisocial behaviour around the CBD has worsened since coronavirus restrictions eased. I can definitely say it's a lot worse. Um, it's sad that it's become this way because I think we've got a great community here, um, but it has to be addressed. This isn't the first time Salvatore's cafe has been targeted by vandals and Mr Johnston says more needs to be done to tackle crime in the CBD. What are we going to do about it today? Not next month, not next year. What are we going to do about it now? Police are investigating. Ainsley Kosh, Nine News. AMSANT has welcomed the new draft agreement reached by the Closing the Gap Joint Council. Ten-year targets aim to reduce incarceration rates, improve health and education. A good outcome for uh, Aboriginal people. We're going to have a seat at the table. We're going to be genuinely, genuinely involved in decision-making processes. The agreement will come into effect mid-next year. Thank you for joining us to stay up to date. Follow Nine News Darwin on Facebook.